Hey all you Splinterheads, welcome back. Bronze Dragon here with, uh, I guess you would consider this a kind of end of year wrap up. This is not going to be all considering and, and saying basically uh, what I've done this year, but basically my point is where I'm ending up and what my final actions of this year are. This isn't my final video of the year. I'll probably do one right on uh, New Year's Eve, kind of looking at uh, other things that I'm looking forward to in the game in 2024. However, um, we've over the last month or so, we've really uh, received a lot of information uh, from the various parts of the Land 2.0 white paper. Uh, Matt has released this in chunks, and the whole goal is releasing this in a form where you know you, it, it's not written in stone. Uh, it can be changed, you know, depending upon what people think about it and everything. So, uh, if there's something in particular in the white paper. Um, that you don't agree with, I would say try to make your uh, make your your opinion heard um, on that and see where it goes. But with that said, uh, really, uh, I've been taking in a lot of other videos uh, YouTube um, Splinterlands creators are making and look and looking at others' opinions and and take them taking them in and and thinking to myself, you know, I've been sitting, you know, we've gone through the holidays and there's been um, I haven't done a lot of spending lately. OK, I did not jump on the train and buy a lot of rebellion packs. I did buy 50 during the pre-sale, but those are just sitting there. I haven't opened them up. In fact, um, I'm still letting Archmage play my bot and it's doing fine in wild. Um, and I haven't felt the need to really go ahead and jump on the train and spend a lot of money on uh, new summoners and such. Those new summoners and the new cards in Rebellion are quite attractive, and I can see how they're really changing the game up. Um, but I haven't spent money on them. I've chosen to, uh, as I've said in the past, try to strengthen my land game because I can see that's where I put most of my effort this last year. With that said, I've been thinking about it. and. Uh, with the information we've received uh, during the, and I'm not casting aspersions, I'm not trying to throw salt here. Uh, everybody has to look at all the information that they have and make the best decisions they possibly can. In my situation, uh, previously, you know, over the last several months, I've really been toying around with the idea of going very wide. In other words, buying multiple plots across. Uh, we've been, we've went through this discussion point about uh, is it better to have all your plots in one region or you could spread them out? And frankly, with the different white paper um, pieces of information that have come out, that's really solidified my idea that I should stay within one or two regions and not spread myself out. Because the main idea, I guess the main proponent for me with buying cheaper plots, uh, you know, wherever they may be on the map, the whole idea was, well, at very least I could use it, I could rent them out for storage and things of this nature. That was the main use case for me. Well, the white paper nuggets have come back and basically blown that out of the water. That's really not an option at this point, okay? So that's taken the, the main use case of going wide and buying multiple more um, plots of land dispersed um away from me you know so i don't really feel like that's a correct option for me at this point so i you know i've done a lot of thinking on the on the on the matter and i think that there's there's upcoming in 2.0 there's going to be so many different levels of having to stake cards invest either sps or spend dec in some way uh, basically multiple costs involved whether they whether you feel these are taxes fees whatever i think mostly they they boil down to uh provide uh, you know bringing up the value of sps and dec but with that said um i've really kind of consolidated back on my opinion of trying to make the best of what i have in other words investing in the current plots i own and not going further because buying more plots is going to cost me more, especially if I venture into different other regions. Considering salt factor, uh, considering the newest part of the white paper that is involved with, uh, if you want to get into the um, secret of Pretoria research, those costs involved and everything, I think I'm much better off staying in the two regions I'm in and not branching out due to all the different levels of costs involved. Okay, so with that said, 
as I've talked about in various uh, videos over the last month or two, um, I've been making slight tweaks, uh, especially since 1.5 went live. I've been making slight tweaks to my land plots, trying to get them to the point where uh, kind of an equilibrium point. Uh, first of all, I'm making enough food to where all the plots, I don't have to buy any, right? And I'm running with just a little bit extra. That would be the perfect. I'm, uh, I guess the perfect situation for me would be making as much SPS and as much uh, um, secretatory research points, uh, mind fart there, uh, as possible at the same time of having the equilibrium of not having to buy food. Now, without going uh, into that uh, much further, um, what I've done is I've tweaked in, and uh, I guess uh, let's roll back for a step. My original uh, strategy, which was courtesy of Gathering the Magic on one of his videos, but I thought it was a very good idea. And at that point, the numbers really worked out. The numbers don't work out as good now, but I wanted to get max level gold foil commons staked across all my plots, right? I felt it was a good value for production points and everything. Now, at this point, I'm really doing it to, because in my brain, I like to have things kind of the same uh, across the board. Um, but uh, at that point, the situation was, uh, it, it brought in a very good production point per US dollar value, right? Now, at this point, the cards we're talking about, uh, gold foil common, basically, uh, Chaos Legion are at least double the cost, if not in some cases triple. So the value proposition isn't there so much because the costs of cards have came up. And we knew that. I mean, um, a lot of people called me out on it and thought that it wasn't going to happen. But I told you that once Land one or once Land 1.5 went live and the build up to that, Cards are going to just start getting more scarce and more scarce. And people might say, oh, we're, we still have tons of cards. That's true. We do need more players in the game. But looking forward towards January and the early part of 2024, we also have to consider that we're in the lead up to another big card burning event. Now, whatever your opinion may be on that, I don't think I'm going to take part in that. Um, and it's probably going to be on, uh, once again, a kind of a whale event. That's fine. Um and the overall goal is to get rid of a bunch of cards and to bring up value of the cards that are left in the system, whether they're being played with, rented out, put on land, uh, staked on battle wagons, what have you, bring their values up. That's fine. But my overall opinion is I wanted to get my cards in line, staked on my uh, land plots before the beginning of the year as much as possible because... And you can call me out on this if, if it turns out not to be true, but mark my words, cards are just going to start going up and up and up in price, right? So you may think, say I'm hopeful, but I'm going to point directly to the fact that I've been buying gold foil common Chaos Legion basically cards for the last four months. And the cards that were going, and we're talking max BCX copies here, the cards that were going for five four five six seven dollars are now going for 14 and a half through twenty dollars okay so more than two times sometimes three times sometimes four times um the price so and just kind of extrapolate that through the burning event you know so okay so with that all said um i've been looking at and i made moves today which i consider to be the final moves I'm going to make in Splinterlands uh, before the end of the year. Okay, I spent roughly $135, $140 US um, within the last couple of days because, like I said, I wanted to get my cards into place on my land. And I think, I fully think that you need to look at this before, if not before the end of the year, uh, before the burning event takes place. Because after that, I think a lot of us, you're going to be paying uh, four or five times what, what the uh, price of, especially like mostly what we're looking at is Chaos Legion cards, right, um, is on the market. So with that said, let's go ahead and jump in because and show you what I did. Um, and this is courtesy of the Baron's Toolbox, just because I really like this uh, 
this UI and how it presents the lands. But you'll see that these are my 11 plots of land. And I really wish I had 12 because I hate odd numbers, something in my brain. Um, so don't be surprised if I don't pick up a, a 12th plot. It's just I'm waiting for a good deal. And that's another thing. Um, the land market, especially in the two regions I'm watching, has dried up a lot. So whether that means that people have um, pulled the plots off of the sale list and they're just not going to play that game, you know, competing for the lowest possible price. Uh, to me, that means that the, the land means more to them than trying to sell it off for a low, low price. So that means that they're holding it for future investment, or maybe they're just going ahead and building stuff on it and using it, uh, what have you. Um, but the two regions I've been watching have largely dried up in plots, and the plots that are still there for sale are this huge obnoxious price that uh, people basically haven't touched them in months, which is fine. Um, but anyway, <laughs> off on a tangent. Um, these are my plots, and you will see that for the most part, on all my plots, I have gold foil commons staked max level. Now, there are a few uh, a few spots which I needed to work on, like this mountain um, has one uh, regular foil, and you will see that this uh, particular card is about 600 uh, production points less than the gold foil, even though that it is a standard foil uh, max level legendary. So. This is one of the use cases. So we see that I need to upgrade that to a gold foil. Now, we also see that I have one over here on a river in Ravenwood that I need to upgrade to a gold foil for the same reason. And I have one here on a tundra that I need to upgrade as well as one on a river. Everything else is gold foil except for what I have on this lake, which happens to be a lucky draw by me and it was magic. Um, so I staked it out better than the others for my research. You will see that I have a max level beta frozen soldier, which, by the way, has went up uh, as well. Okay, let's look at it on peak monsters because that'd be the, the more efficient way to look at that. It's a rare and it's water. Um, so here we go. Uh, frozen soldiers. And if you do a bulk buy uh, at uh, max level, you are looking at $165 now. Uh, two months ago when I was prepping for land 1.5, I bought that for $72, 72 or 74. So it's over doubled in price and a lot of the betas have as well. So I feel secure in saying that most cards, um, obviously everybody's looking at different ones. I'm specifically looking at the gold foil commons, uh, as well as some of the beta, uh, uh, rares. Now, in a lot of cases, whenever I was prepping for this uh, 1.5, um, for some reason, the rare betas were more money efficient than going with the commons because you needed a lot more uh, copies and it just ended up being more expensive for what you needed. Either way, let's go ahead and jump back to uh, over here. We were talking about this. Now, so one other thing I got to thinking about it. Well, that's four gold foils. I could just buy those gold foil commons right now, roughly $60, roughly $15 to $16 a piece, plop those in across the board. They, everything would be upgraded, right? Now, the secondary in my mind is the fact uh, about the, the most recent white paper release that was really talking about um, research and what goes into the research and things of this nature and how much more difficult and more expensive research is going to get once land 2.0 comes out. Because even if you have a plot of land and you're going to research on it, um, you have to deal directly with, uh, well, not directly, on the market, you're gonna have to buy from castle and keep owners. So really in the back of my mind, uh, and we're talking about trifold ruins here, uh, which are used going to be used for research. In my mind, castle and keep owners are almost are almost going to have a deadlock on research. Okay, so because they're going to control it and it's going to be a monopoly. So to me, us little guys are not going to be able to really effectively get into the research game uh, unless we pay through the noses. Okay, so this is just a primary look at it because everything is gated through those trifoil runes. Okay, those um, uh, as far as research goes. 
And even though anybody could buy a plot of land and do research on it and build the appropriate building, you're still going to have to buy the trifoil runes off of castle and keep owners, which have a large amount of money invested in this game. So obviously they're going to try to recoup that money through selling trifoil runes. Um, but they also have ulterior motives. They could... Uh, a lot of times these people that own these castles and keeps also own multiple plots of land as well. So they may be funneling them to their land. And basically that's that's a use case for them. Right. I guess my opinion, uh, I guess where this boils down to is I'm going to try to beef up and get a little bit more research done before 2.0 hits live. Um, but I'm not going to sacrifice SPS unless tons and tons more uh, lands come online and my SPS earnings uh, go in the toilet. Um, I'm I'm not going to worry about that. Uh, what I do want to do is, in my mind, I wanted to go ahead and uh, increase the production point power on my uh, research uh, on my lake, which is magic, right? So it is rare. Um, so this is the best use case for me. I do have another magic research land, but it is common. So basically what I wanted to do was go ahead and put another beta, uh, in this case, uh, a beta rare on, um, on this, uh, particular plot and then move one of these gold foils to another plot. So, I'm going to do that. Uh, so I had to buy a beta and then a uh, max level. And then I had to buy three gold foils to account for the other three land plots that I had. So that's um, a long case scenario for what my final action in Splinter Forge has been. Uh, Splinter Forge, Splinter Lands has been for 2023. So uh, let's go ahead and we can take a look at it because it's currently time for me to go ahead and collect um, for my land production for the day. So what I'll do is I'll go through this because I keep my numbers in a spreadsheet. Um, let's check this out. You can see briefly what my spreadsheet is. And you can see um, actually today is one month end. So um, we started land 1.5 started or I let, let me restate this. The first claim I made was on 1129. So it's a month in for me. It may be a day off for you, for you if you were claiming before that, but it's a month in for me. Um, so this will be interesting. Anyway, I may have to fast forward through this, but I'm keeping all my numbers just for future reference. Uh, I do want to do a video on what I'm looking at uh, after 30 days. Okay, so we're going to do a few moves here. Uh, all in all, I'm going to move a new beta on to my magic rare land in 114. I'm going to move a gold foil off that land. It will be in cooldown. I will not be able to add it to another land plot until uh, after the cooldown is done. Then I will have three more gold foils I can put into place. When the cooldown on that other gold foil is done, then I can go ahead and move it and complete my upgrade for the end of the year. Let's go ahead and jump into this. So the rare I'm looking at on um, in 114 is this particular plot. I'm going to, as normal, uh, before you move cards around, you're going to want to have to do a harvest on that particular plot. And let me get my calculator up here because I keep track. So today I harvested point uh, zero. Let's see here, 68.097 minus the tax of 6.81. Now, this isn't exactly 24 hours. This is uh, only about 21 hours or so in, so it's not a full day for me. Uh, I just wanted to get this video done before too late. So we'll go ahead and calculate what this is. Put that into my... Now we'll go back and what we'll do is we'll go into manage if you've not done this before and we will see that I have four gold foils and the one beta and what I'm going to do is I'm going to move one and it doesn't really matter so I will move this guy off and I will move in my battle orca which is a uh, beta rewards cards uh, rewards card or promo card uh, we'll have to check that out it's either a reward or, or a promo card. I think it might be a promo card. 
Uh, anyway, we're going to move that into place because that's the one I particularly bought. And you'll see that the production power uh, is in line with, because it's a rare, with the Frozen Soldier. And you'll see that it's uh, roughly four times three is 12. It's more than, it's roughly three times uh, what, what it was. So let's go ahead and save changes and confirm. And you'll see that my hourly rate went up from 3.267 to 4.114. And once again, this is talking about uh, research points. <clears throat> so we'll go ahead and save that. And then let's go back to, uh, and we're staying in the same region. Um, I want to look at uh, plot 69, which is right here. We'll go in and also uh, do a harvest on this particular one. It is uh, growing grain. So we got 4,592.65 minus 459.265 tax equals a yield of a little bit over 4,100 for today. Like I said, this is a little bit less than 24 hours. And then we will go ahead and do the same thing here, manage you will see that um, I have four golds and one standard. We are going to swap that standard foil out for a, um, let's go with the cruel cethropod. Save changes. <clears throat> My old uh, grain production rate goes up from 219 to 231. Every little bit helps. And in this particular region, I'm kind of like right on that line. Um, I'm upping my production points uh, by a good amount. So I'm hoping that I end up kind of right on the line. Um, I may end up having to pull some other maneuvers to produce some more food in the region. But I do have a little bit of a backlog uh, surplus. So with that said, those are the two changes in that region I want to make. Let's go ahead and harvest the rest of this. Uh, we've also already done the research. Let's go ahead and claim the rest of the grain while we are here <clears throat> 6905.25 minus the tax because i'm just keeping track of what the yield is or what i get okay Claim SPS. Five point two three seven minus the tax of point five two four. Four point seven one three. Okay. Now we can go move on to my other region. <clears throat> now what we're going to do here is we're going to make two changes. We're going to look at plot 87, which is a, a rare plot growing grain. Once again, we are going to do a harvest. And then we're going into manage. Once again, we can see that I got, uh, I've only had one standard foil here and we are going to change that out for a flying squid. Save changes. Production rate goes from 250 up to 264 per hour. Confirm. The key thing here is remember to do your claim on that particular plot before you change anything. Okay, let's go back to the region. Now, the other plot I'm looking at is six right here. It's a common plot growing grain. Once again, let's go ahead and do our harvest.
4,800, 5.14 minus the tax. I know this is kind of boring, but I wanted to go through this whole process of what I've been uh, you know, doing here at the end of the year. I think, um, you know, I'm feeling pretty good about where I'm sitting uh, after this uh, set of changes. Okay, we got that done. Uh, let's go ahead and go into manage. Once again, the same old thing here for me. Um, I've got one standard foil here I want to change out. And this one, I'm going to put a lava spider in there. And save changes. I go up from 229 to 242 per hour. And then after this, I can go ahead and do the rest of the claim for the region because the other card I'm waiting to switch in, I will have to wait for a cool down period. Um, so let's go ahead and do the rest of the region. Claim the rest of the grain. Uh, I did that wrong. Forty three hundred twenty seven point nine three six. Harvest the research. Forty eight. Point three two five minus four point eight three three. And finally, the SPS. Seventeen point one three six minus one point. 713, about 15 for the day. Okay, now we'll go back. And one other thing that's kind of, it's just like a minor thing, but I hope that they change is that on these claim icons, they're using the grain icon for research and SPS. In my mind, this should be the research icon and this should be the SPS icon. Like I said, just a small thing, but. Uh, Anyway, uh, we can go back to my production overview. Um, that has increased. Uh, so what did I accomplish here? Okay, so wrap this up. I put an extra about 130, 140 US dollars into uh, my account uh, in the last couple of days. I bought um, several cards, mostly gold foil, one beta, max uh, BCX for what I bought. And I moved them into place to upgrade my land plots. Now we can go back over here to Baron's toolbox. Uh, I'm not getting paid for this. I just think it's a cool tool. I'll leave the link in the show notes in case you've never checked it out. I did a video this last week on it. You want to check it out. Um, also, he's uh, very active in chat on Discord. So if you want to talk about it, I'm sure he would be up for it. Um, <clears throat> so let's go ahead and log back into the land manager and come back to the um, You'll see like this is where my main change was. I added that battle orca um, and you will see that there's only one. There's only one plot I now have that does not that has a spot that doesn't have a gold right here. And that's waiting for that one gold foil to come off a of cooldown that I moved off of this plot. And when that happens, then I'll move it in and I'll feel good for the year. But you'll see that I, I especially gained a lot more production on um, on my magic research on my lake. And then I beefed up uh, the grain production on the rest of the plots. And overall, I, it's not really, I wanted to get a position uh, bef into a position before the card burning uh, where I felt good with my plots. And especially since there's gonna be a lot of changes in 2.0. And one of the main things I wanna look at in upcoming videos is starting that preparation process taking that or preparation for 2.0 that is taking the information that matt's revealed over the last month um, 
through the white paper reveals and kind of processing that and looking at my plots and taking into account uh, what I could possibly do on them and try to consider all the different taxes and fees and everything like that. And what's the, what's the best possible use case for the plots I have? Currently I have 11. Like I said, don't be surprised if I buy a 12th just because I like even numbers. That's the way my brain works. Um, but I'm not gonna buy a 12th until I find a good deal, okay? So I hope this has been uh, useful and I hope that your holidays are going well and everybody on your side is happy and healthy. Um, please leave in the comments if you like this kind of uh, content or if there's other stuff you want to talk about, let me know. I'm always open up for different uh, 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 topics for videos, game related, you know, especially if it's uh, on the high blockchain. So with that said, this has been Bronze Dragon and I will see you on the flip side. Thank you.